I'm Stephanie Scuffum, Director of the Kansas City Film Office at Visit KC. Welcome to the Weekly Report. At KC Film Office, we work to recruit film, television, and commercial production to Kansas City. Once a project agrees to film here, we assist them with all the resources they need to make a film, television series, or episode, or commercial. On average, we assist 200 projects a year. These projects support the local economy through things like hotel stays and jobs for the more than 700 area media professionals. Kansas City has a long history in the movies. I'm standing right here on 18th Street in the Crossroads District. This is historically known as Film Row, and right behind me is the old 20th Century Fox building. For decades, these locations served as a distribution hub for every major studio to ship films to movie houses across the country. You can learn more at the self-guided KC Film History Tour on the Visit KC website under Things to Do, Film Tourism. Here on Film Row, we've immortalized some of Kansas City's legendary film stars. Stars like Walt Disney, right here. Ginger Rogers, Robert Altman, even Gene Harlow. And the Kansas City Film Office provides producers very important resources. For example, we have an online database of locations all over Kansas City. This database provides visual information on places to shoot throughout Kansas City. We showcase places like Union Station, the J.C. Nichols Fountain in Mill Creek Park, and even private residences. And we're always interested in adding more, so if you manage or own a property, be sure to let us know. All of these projects put Kansas City on big and small screens around the world. This increases our visibility and our collective brand as a city. It even promotes tourism. There is a newly launched self-guided tour for the Netflix Emmy award-winning hit series Queer Eye Season 3 that filmed in Kansas City. Just go to visitkc.com, things to do, to find out more. And the breaking news this week is that you can see Kansas City on television in more than 190 countries with the release of Netflix Queer Eye Season 4. That means the Fab Five are back. Time to get out your tissues for a lot of happy crying while you binge watch. And speaking of all things Kansas City, did you know that 816 Day is recognized as a real Kansas City holiday. The City Council passed an ordinance in 2018 to celebrate all things KC each August 16th. Get out and enjoy Kansas City culture featuring live entertainment, branded events, and special shopping and dining deals created for the occasion. Day-long festivities throughout the Metro will culminate at City Market with a theatrical performance by Kemet the Phantom at 8.16 p.m. If you're like me, you're counting down the days till it's back to school time. Did you know Kansas City residents can take advantage of the three-day sales tax holiday coming up? During Friday, August 2nd through Sunday, August 4th, shoppers who purchase certain items of clothing, shoes, school supplies, and computers in Kansas City, Missouri stores will not have to pay any sales tax. For a complete list of eligible items, visit dor.mo.gov slash tax and search back to school. When we work with out-of-town producers, they are fascinated that Kansas City is full of historic and modern architecture. For example, right over my shoulder is the MGM building, and up the block from that is the beautiful Kauffman Center for the Performing Arts. It takes real city leadership to get something like that done. Speaking of leaders, have you ever wanted to tell the city council what to do? Well, now is your chance. The City Council would like you to provide input on its priorities and its five-year business plan. The input will also help shape the next annual budget. Residents are invited to participate in a resident work session. Work sessions are scheduled for Saturday, August 3rd, 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. at Southeast Community Center, 4201 East 63rd Street. Monday, August 5th, noon to 2 p.m. at National World War I Museum and Memorial, 2 Memorial Drive and Thursday, August 15th, 6 to 8 p.m. at Briarcliff Church, 800 Northeast Vivian Road. Now let's go to video reports from city departments. Thanks for watching The Weekly Report. I'm Steph Scuppum with the Kansas City Film Office. I'll see you at the movies.
All throughout July, Casey Parks is Game On for Park and Recreation Month. For 31 days, we're celebrating the fun, games, and excitement that Parks and Recreation offers to citizens of all ages and abilities throughout Kansas City. Go to caseyparks.org and check out our events calendar for fun ideas and activities. And follow us on social media at KCMO Parks. And remember, KC Parks is where KC plays. He's only five years old, but Damon Mertz can tell you a lot about a wastewater pump station. This is like a little toy control panel right there. Oh, first pump station, first pump station. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> right there. Yeah. His mom, Heather Kellum, said Damon has always wanted to know where things would go. She says it started with a vacuum. Then, where does the water go when it goes down the sink? We have like a, a little sewer at the end of our driveway. And, and, and I'd flush the toilet and I'd like put my ear to the sewer lid and I heard it go in there. One day in late June, a KC water crew was doing some work on Damon's block. He was thrilled and wanted to meet the people who work on the drains and sewers he is so interested in. He took a picture with our crew, which his mother shared on Instagram, and later built his own treatment plant with his Legos. This is the water treatment plant. This is the actual plant where the water gets treated. But it comes up through this hose, goes up that, up that. KC Water wanted to show Damon the real thing and invited him on a tour of the Fishing River Wastewater Treatment Plant. John Lopez is the chief plant operator. He and Jorge Garcia showed Damon just how wastewater gets from his home to the treatment plant, from the pipes to the pump station to the basins where the water is cleaned by tiny microorganisms. This is where the air bubbles are introduced to the bugs to keep the bugs alive. Damon saw the control panel that keeps everything moving and barely resisted the urge to push any buttons. Control panel, that was my favorite part. He also saw how clean the water is when it goes back into the river. It was a treat for all of us here at Casey Water. We hope Damon's interest in wastewater engineering lasts as long as the small souvenir he got to take home. What do you want to say? I want another poop toy. <laughs> for Casey Water, I'm Heather Frierson. Today we are at Musical Theatre Heritage located on the third level of the Crown Center Shops at 2450 Grand where nearly 50,000 visitors are expected this year alone. Today we are also speaking with Executive Artistic Director Tim Scott who will tell us what happens behind the scenes and in front on the stage. Thank you for coming today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So, can you give me a little background on why the history of the American theater, why is that the focus of Musical Theater Heritage? Right, so Musical Theater Heritage was founded by George Harder, who uh, mm -hmm. of the syndicated uh, radio show A Night on the Town, and mm -hmm. MTH was formed to kind of syndicate and broaden that mission to a national audience. And then the live component came about because there was really no local mission. So mm -hmm. George found he had a lot of audience all over the country, you know, uh, two dozen radio stations throughout the United States of America, but really in Kansas City, there was no local mission and since his mission was you know musical theater on the radio and Broadway through the decades he decided to bring that live component to Kansas City and to MTH so we started producing live shows really back in 2003 at the old Belger Art Center you mm -hmm. know the great Belger building um, on a loading dock and so we would really it was very eclectic and uh, we did concert style musicals there starting in 2003 and we've evolved into full-scale produced musicals today. Mm -hmm. And you, in addition to your current season, which your, your upcoming performance is in the Heights, mm -hmm. which is a huge, huge hit, Tony Award winning mm -hmm. hit. Um, what other programs do you have that are going on that people may not be aware of because they, they're not performances necessarily. Right, so we specialize in musical theater, Broadway style shows. I like to say we do big Broadway musicals in a theater with only seven rows. It's so unique, there's nothing really like it in Kansas City and not really anywhere because to do a big Broadway musical in such an intimate space, 
is mm -hmm. certainly challenging. But beyond that, you know, we like to partner with uh, other music organizations. We've partnered with uh, the People's Liberation Big Band a mm -hmm. lot. And we brought in their 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 group. Red Cox is great, um, and of course Ensemble Iberica, Bo Bledsoe. We have a show coming up with them this week, and other uh, music organizations that are Kansas City based that we feel are in alignment with our mission, which is mostly musically based. Um, and we'll also bring in acts from out of town. We brought in um, Heather McRae, of course, the great Heather McRae was in the original Broadway production of Hair. Her father's Gordon McRae mm -hmm. to do her own one-person show. Mm -hmm. Claiborne Elder, uh, Tally Sessions, Corey Cott, Laura Osnes, bringing in Jeremy Jordan. They were great. Jeremy Jordan, uh, he was the original in Newsies to do his show uh, coming up later this year. So yeah, it's not just musical theater, but we really kind of try to specialize in, in a lot of different areas of musical performance. And then of course the Empire Dance Academy in our newly renovated dance studio a few years ago where Kenny Personette uh, runs and maintains his own dance facility. So we like to partner with arts organizations, with musical collaborators, uh, because we find that the more people we can collaborate with, the better we can do. How about your educational programs for youth? And yeah, why is that important to Definitely. The so in 2016, we started the education program here. We had 24 students enroll that year as kind of a pilot session. And this year, in 2019, we have nearly 300 students enrolled. Right. And you have something going on now. You have summer art camp going on. Right. So we're in like our, we, we do summer camps through June and July, um, mm -hmm. all through August 2nd is when our camps conclude. And, you know, we got national recognition because we were one of the first uh, companies to do a Camp Hamilton where we take all that great mm. Lin-Manuel Miranda stuff. We've partnered with Operation Breakthrough, who th those kids are really attracted to that and really feel heard and included in that type of music and experience. Um, and then we do, you know, we, we specialize in kind of whatever's whatever we feel is urgent and immediate in the moment. Like The Greatest Showman was a big hit a few years ago. So we have a camp called The Greatest Showman. This is The Greatest Show where we kind of specialize in, in acrobatics and circus and, and, and the musical theater components that tie into that theme. Um, but beyond that, we partnered with the Girl Scouts for a few years now. We do sp uh, specifically Girl Scouts oriented workshops, mm -hmm. musical theater workshops. Uh, we have spring break camps with Operation Breakthrough where we actually go into Operation Breakthrough. Okay. We travel to them there and we give them an immersive experience for a, a two weeks at a time. Um, so the education program is, it, it really is something that if I talk long about it, I'll start getting teary-eyed because when you see these kids, you know, performing on their last day, all like-minded kids with the same goal and agenda in mind, it's really moving. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned Lin-Manuel Miranda and now your next production's In the Heights. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit, for, for someone who's not aware of what In the Heights is about, yeah. can you give us a little synopsis? Definitely, so In the Heights, of course, the, it was nominated for, a, it was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize, won multiple mm -hmm. Tony Awards, as you said, Lin-Manuel, who's like super famous now, Mary Poppins and everything else. Uh, it's an inner city story. It's really a culturally diverse story about pride and ethnicity, pride in your neighborhood, about finding your place. Um, it's it, it takes place in Washington Heights, which is very culturally diverse. The main character is Dominican Republic, but it's Puerto Ricans and, and, and Mexicans and, and white people and brown people all over the place in the story. And what's great about it is that it just shows that in any given neighborhood, community can be found. Mm -hmm. And your family is really where you decide to set roots in. So it's a great story, you know, kind of uh, paved the way for his career as kind of a, a hip hop style musical. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's getting produced all the time now because of Hamilton, of course, he's sure. a household name because of Hamilton. But I think what you'll find within the Heights for the people that don't know it, is that it sounds a lot like Hamilton, except it doesn't have the same kind of orchestral production value because mm -hmm. he didn't have that much money back then. Mm -hmm. But it's got the same style, the same flair. His, his voice is so unique and it's so prevalent in that musical as well. We have Nedra Dixon directing that for us, super proud. And I, I told you earlier that we have Amanda Ziev, who was the assistant lighting designer on Hamilton, who's coming in to do lights wow. for In the Heights for us. So we're really excited to see what they come up with. And if people are interested in finding out more about the programs and about getting tickets for In the Heights, yeah. where would they go? So the easiest place is to go online to musicaltheaterheritage.com or mthkc.com. Either will work. You can call us the box office. It's 816-221-6987. We're pretty easy to find. We're in Crown Center. Google In the Heights, Kansas City. I'm sure we'll come up. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us of today. Course. Thank you. The Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund supports local nonprofits that bring cultural, social, educational, and recreational activities to our area.
about additional upcoming events, visit kcmo.gov ntdf.